of the sample. What we want to do is we want to open the bleed port at the top. We want to take our cell pressure tube, which is currently plugged into our cell pressure burette. We want to remove that and we want to place this into the auxiliary water line at the bottom left side of the panel. And what that does, if you notice, it's about 59 PSI of pressure. Now that, that pressure is not on the sample itself, it's just here at this valve, it's stopped in this, by this valve. But that's the line pressure coming in from the wall. Okay, it's straight from the wall. And that's the water we want to use to fill the triaxial cell. Okay. So all I want to do, once I have everything mounted, is open this valve and allow water to fill the cell. Okay. Now, I, I don't want to open this completely because I do want to try and minimize the amount of water or air bubbles that I generate while I fill the cell. So at first, I want to kind of make it slow and then I can increase that speed as it rises. Okay. Now remember, we've protected the sample with the membrane and the O-rings, so the water that's going around it right now is not infiltrating the sample at all. At least it shouldn't unless we have a leak. And we'll find that out during the testing if we do. Okay. <clears throat> so again, we're filling the cell. We're allowing air to evacuate. And what, I, what you want to avoid is you don't want to close this with this valve open or you're putting a 59 PSI or whatever line pressure PSI onto the sample. You want to always close this valve when you get close to the top, this valve, not the top, okay? And what I want to do is try and eliminate as much air as I can from inside the cell. So I tip it the angle to where the air is going to that bleed screw there. And then I slightly open the valve again, make sure that all the air is going to that side until I get water coming out of the top, which I'd have now. There we go. Okay, so uh, you can look inside, make sure you, have, you don't have any air bubbles anywhere around there. Remember, I turn this valve off. I don't close this up until that valve is closed because then I'll generate a bunch of pressure on our sample that we're not measuring and that's not good. Okay, so now that I have that valve closed, completely closed, I can go ahead and remove the pressure, put it back onto the cell pressure line, you're at. And now I can slowly close this bleed valve. If I do it too fast, I don't want to generate any undue pressure. And you can put a little screwdriver on it if you wish, although it should tighten up fairly easily. And then again, you want to make sure that you have paper towels handy so you can keep things dry as possible. And this is the point before I do anything else, I go through the entire cell and I eliminate any standing water that I can see. Because I want to make sure that if there are any leaks, I know about them right away. So I can correct them. Any leaks around any area. So I go through very meticulously and draw, dry out any water I can see puddled or sitting on any area of the load frame or the cell. Okay. 